What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke. And today we're making a hot and fast chuck roast, cooking it like a brisket. Y'all stick around. I was at the grocery store and I saw this huge, beautiful chunk of beef for only $14.21. It's just a little over three pounds, almost three and a quarter. And I thought, let's make a hot and fast chuck roast because I made a hot and fast brisket video a while back as well. And that brisket turned out awesome. And so I wanna see what happens when you cook a chuck roast hot and fast like I did that brisket. Great marbling in this piece of chuck. Lots of good fat that's gonna break down, hopefully keep it nice and moist. Gonna just put a little olive oil on it. While you're putting your binder on your chuck roast, it's always a good practice to go down and smash the like button. Now that our binder's on, we're gonna do this fairly uh, simply. We're gonna hit it up with a little bit of the salt, pepper, garlic from Lane's. It's got a great grit to it, and it's gonna put a, a nice base flavor onto this chuck. I really like the size of the grit in this Lane's seasoning. Then we're gonna be hitting it up with what I put on a brisket is the brisket and Anko combination rub from Lane's, the Bronco rub. This stuff is great. Have a nice flavor profile on this chuck roast. I'll probably call it a brisket about a hundred times in this video. Pat that on, flip it over. Olive oil, spread. Don't forget one of the keys to making good barbecue is going over to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook and joining that group. Uh, lots of people teaching good stuff. Lots of people sharing pictures of their cooks, learning. Come be one of them. Share some pictures of your cooks. Teach somebody something that they don't know. Learn something that you don't know. You'll get to see some behind the scenes stuff for my cooks. Help make American Smoke better all the time. It's one thing we can always do is be better no matter how good we are. We can be better and that's why I started this channel because I was getting better and I thought, man, I might be able to help some other people get better at barbecue. All right, so we got top and bottom. Now we're just gonna put this big boy on his side here. A little bit of olive oil, spread it around a little bit. This chuck roast is ready for the smoke. We're gonna let this sweat on for about 15 or 20 minutes while we are getting our pit going. So that's really all that takes. Uh, little binder, whatever seasoning you wanna put on it, make sure you've got salt and pepper. If nothing else, just salt and pepper is gonna be great. Uh, anything else is just gonna change that flavor profile a little bit, enhance the flavor of the beef a little bit. Um, we're gonna be firing our pit up today at 300 degrees. Not super hot, but not super low. And we're gonna be running some pellets in our smoke tube. I believe what I'm gonna probably run for this brisket is gonna be mesquite. So we'll be doing some mesquite pellets and some mesquite wood chips combined in our smoke tube in the pit boss. I decided to go with some pecan chips instead of mesquite. Uh, my main reasoning was because I didn't have any. I thought that these were mesquite and they're uh, pecan. So we're gonna be going with a little bit of the, the charcoal pellets, some competition blend, and pecan wood. I think it's gonna turn out really well. I'm just gonna get that into the tube. I found out that just having an extra bucket to do this process with makes things so much easier. Always give it a shake, see if you can pack it down a little bit. Throw a little bit more in there. Light it up, baby. Sweat it on beautifully, by the way. <laughs> okay, so we are at around the one hour mark and it's time to go in here and give this thing a spritz and check out that color. <laughs> I know the camera don't do it justice, but we're just doing a little half and half water and apple cider vinegar just to keep it moist. And that's all it needs. The color on this thing is epic, but we don't wanna to lose too much heat, so let's close this pit back up. 
So we have went really fast. We're not quite at the three hour mark yet. And we kind of just pushed through the stall up past 180. It's at 182 right now. Now what I want to do for those last 20 degrees is I'm going to wrap this in foil because what I want is I want it to be just almost shreddable. I want it to be very tender because I'm going to make uh, chuck roast sandwiches and things like that with this. I'm not going to slice it up and eat it like a brisket like I did my last one. <laughs> Today we're going to be using a little bit of dill pickle juice from some dill pickles. Uh, we do this on roast and it always turns out phenomenal. What you want to do is to just boat up your foil a little bit on the sides so that the pickle juice doesn't run out when you pour it in there. Uh, once you've got it boated up just a little bit, we're going to add probably maybe five tablespoons of pickle juice, half a cup, whatever you want to call it. Get it all over the chuck roast. That way it kind of pulls in around the bottom and the pickle juice is just going to help to steam just a little bit. The uh, connective tissues of this chuck roast take it from pretty tender to pretty shreddable pretty easily. Uh, next we're going to go in with three or four pats of butter. The butter is just going to help to give it a little bit more of a savory flavor. This is unsalted butter. I typically use unsalted because I've already got about as much salt on this chuck as I want. Then all we're going to do is just sort of fold that over on the ends and the sides. You don't have to worry about everything being covered on this wrap because what we're going to do next is we're going to turn it a little bit and make sure that the top is completely covered with foil. Make sure that you pay attention that you have a good coverage on the top and that no steam can really escape because that steam is going to be really what you know makes this thing super tender and shreddable just like how we want it to be. If you're using a meter, make sure you pop that out because it will not work if it's wrapped up in a double layer of heavy duty foil. Once that's done, pack it down nice and tight. Make sure there's not a lot of air space in there and we're going to be getting ready to go into the smoker. All right, so it took about four and a half hours to cook this chuck roast, which is a great amount of time because I was able to put it in at lunch and we're eating it for dinner. It looks and smells great, or it looked great before I put it into the foil. I pulled it, it was right above 205 when I pulled it, so a little hotter than what I initially had planned, but I think we're gonna be okay because we did about an hour and a half rest. We're gonna go ahead and open up this foil and have a look. Oh man, look at this thing. Oh, look at it. Oh, let's get this out of here and onto the cutting board. Oh, mama. Feels like it's about to fall apart. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a cut on it just to kind of see what's going on and get a taste and then I'm gonna shred it a little bit. Oh. Oh, that is just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. That's exactly what I want. When I drag a knife across it, I want to start pulling apart. That is absolutely awesome. Oh. Beautiful. This is uh, much better than my first chuck roast that I made on a, a video on. This is much better. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you can shred this. This is uh, exactly what I was hoping to get. Beautiful chuck roast. So good. I'm not even gonna lie, so good. 